In today's notes, we're going to take a look at the sine and cosine of complements, and then we're going to find a missing side using our trig ratios. So to start at the top of the page, it says the sine of an acute angle has the same value as the blank of its complement. And we've seen this um, relationship in some of the homeworks and note pages that we've covered so far. Remember, complements are two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. So I'm looking at the diagram to the right in triangle ABC. The capital letters represent the vertices of the triangles, where the lowercase letter, so if I look at lowercase a, that represents the side opposite angle A, and lowercase b represents the side opposite angle B, and lowercase c represents the side opposite angle C. Okay, so back to that blank. The sine of an acute angle, so in a right triangle we have two acute angles, so angle A and angle B. They are acute, and they're also complementary, since one angle is 90 and all three angles of the triangle add up to 90. Um, once you subtract the right angle, you're left with 90 degrees to divide up into angle A and angle B. So the sine of an acute angle has the same value as the cosine of its complement. So the sine of A would be equal to, well, the complement of A is B, so that's equal to the cosine of B. And then I'm going to actually prove that or show that with the letters labeled on the triangle. So if we take a look at the sine of A. Sine is opposite, the side opposite of the angle over the hypotenuse, and the side opposite angle A is side A, and our hypotenuse is C. So sine of angle A is equal to the ratio of A to C. Now the cosine of B, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, the side adjacent to angle B, now we're at this angle, is also side A over the hypotenuse C. So as you can see, they're both equivalent to the same ratio or number. So once again, the sine of an acute angle has the same value of its complement. And we know that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is 90 degrees. So let's use the table of trig ratios to actually take a look at this. So the table of trig ratios is on the page to your left. And it wants us to take a look at that first uh, line is the sine of 42 degrees. So let's scroll down to 42 degrees. So sine, cosine, and tangent, I believe that's the order in the table, yes. So we're looking at the sine of 42 degrees. So that's the first column. So 0 0.6691. And then let's write down the cosine of 17. So that's the middle. So here's 17, and the cosine is 0 0.9563. And remember, these are rounded to the nearest 10 thousandth. So 0 0.9563. So that should be equal to... The cosine, or these measurements, so the sine of 42, should also be equal to the cosine of the complement of a 42 degree angle. So that would be equal to the cosine of 90 minus 2, 48. So let's look at the cosine of 48 on the trig table to see if indeed it is 0 0.6691.
oops, 48 is over here. So the cosine of 48 is, yes, 0 0.6691. And then the cosine of 17, that should be equal to the sine of its complement. So 90 minus 17 would be the sine of 73 degrees. So the sine of 73 is, yep, 0 0.9563. Okay, so let's look at examples one through four. Number one says in right triangle ABC, so let's draw a picture. It says the measure of angle C is the 90 degree angle, so I'm going to put A here and B here. It says the cosine of A is given as 0 0.8829. Find the sine of B. Well, these are acute, okay? Whoops, must have hit the board. They are the acute angles of a right triangle, so we know that the sine of B equals the cosine of A, because A and B are the complementary angles. And since it gave us the cosine of angle A, we know that the sine of B is also equal to 0 0.8829. To the right, uh, in right triangle ABC, where C is also the 90 degree angle, it says that the sine of angle A, so this angle right here, is 8 over 17. And that is opposite over hypotenuse. So our hypotenuse is 17. And the side opposite, A, is 8. Find the cosine of B. Well, cosine of B is right here, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So you can draw the picture, but if you remembered, we know that the sine of any angle is equal to the cosine of the complement, which is B. So the sine, which is 8 over 17, is also equal to the cosine of the complement. Down below, the sine of 30 equals the cosine of x. Find the value of x. Well, let's go back up here where we use the trig table. The sine of 42 equals the cosine of 48. So this is very similar, except we have the x in one spot. But we know that the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of its complement. So these two angles have to add up to 90. So down here, if it says the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of another angle, you know that these two angles are complementary. So x plus 30 equals 90. Subtract, and x is equal to 60 degrees. And then to the right to finish, find the value of x that makes the cosine of theta equal to the sine of theta plus 20 true. Again, if the cosine of some angle is equal to the sine of another angle, these two angles, theta and theta plus 20, must be complementary. So I'm going to subtract the 21st. So 2 theta equals, uh, not 7 theta, equals 70. Divide by 2, and theta equals 35 degrees. On the back side, we're now going to use the trig ratios to find a missing side. We did use Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side of a right triangle as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now we're going to be given an angle measure. So given the measure of one of the acute angles and the measure of one side, we can find the length of the side of the right triangle. And that's because in every ratio, so right here, theta is the angle. So theta is the angle where your O and H are your sides. So given two of the three values or unknowns, you can find the other unknown. 
Okay? So identify the placement of your sides based on the angle that's given. Choose your ratio. Remember, Sokotoa helps us remember. And then we substitute the given values into each trig equation. And it's an equation because the sine or cosine of the angle is equal to a ratio of the two sides. And because we have that equal sign, it's an equation. And then use your calculator to evaluate x. Um, oh, very important. Be sure you're in degree mode. So take a minute on your calculator and press the mode button to do any calculation with trig. At this point, we're only working in degrees. So press mode, which is to the right of the second button. And right now, my calculator, the board calculator, is in radian mode. So I'm going to scroll down, arrow down over 1, and hit enter. And then I'm going to move it down just to make sure degree is lit. I'm going to get out of that. And then also press mode again to make sure it's in degree mode. Good. Let's minimize that for now until we have to do our calculation. So in 5, it says solve for x. We're going to round to the nearest whole number. It says the cosine of 35 equals 12 over x. Well, to undo the division of x, we can multiply both sides by x, and that cancels out. Okay, so we have um, x cosine of 35 degrees equals 12. Now, written without a symbol between the x and cosine is multiplication. So now I divide both sides by the cosine of 35. And x equals, and then we'll show the approximate value. When I do so the calculations on the calculator, I'm a nut in that I want to make sure I have the right answer. So I'll do the cosine of 35 first. And then I'll do 12 divided by, and go up and grab the answer to break it down, or use the second answer button. And it's 14.6492956. So I'm going to write that whole decimal first, which you should on the regions. and then rounds. So the nearest whole number, that would be approximately 15. And the next one, find the value of x to the nearest tenth. So the equation wasn't set up. Okay, so when we look at the angle, the angle given is 42 degrees. Now you could also find the complement of 48 degrees and work with 48 degrees, but why work with an angle measure you had to um, do the calculation for. So let's use the 42 because any computational error, okay, will then cause another error later on. So using the angle measure of 42, we have the side opposite and the hypotenuse, which is sine. So I'll write it out the sine of 42 degrees equals the side opposite, which is x, over 12. And the opposite of dividing x by 12 is multiplying. So I'm going to do 12 times the sine of 42 on the calculator. And you can just type it in, 12 sine of 42, all in one line, because if there's no operation between the 12 and the word sine, it does mean multiplication. So hit Enter, and x is equal to 8. 0.029567276. Round it to the nearest tenth. X is approximately 8.0. In number seven, it says that a ship is sailing toward a small island, which is um, 800 miles away. So if ship is starting here, it's sailing towards the island. If the ship is two degrees off course, so there's the two degrees, but how many miles will it miss the island? So here's the island. This distance it'll be off is already marked for you x. So we're trying to find x to the nearest hundredth of a mile. Well, given the two sides, this is opposite, 
over adjacent. We don't have the hypotenuse. And if you write it out, so katoa, these both have the hypotenuse. So we automatically, if you're unsure, know it's going to be tangent. So it's tangent of the angle, so tangent of 2 degrees, equals the side opposite, which is x, over um, adjacent, which is 800. So the opposite of dividing by 800 is multiplying. So on the calculator, 800 tan of 42 gives me, oh, why did I type in 42? It's 800 tan of 2. There we go. That looks much better. Um, so say it's only 2 degrees off, so it couldn't have been 720 miles. So 27.9366155.9. And rounding to the nearest hundredths, uh, because the 6 is to the right, the ship will miss the island. by about 27.94 miles. And last one. Find the length of BC and CD. Well, we have overlapping triangles here. Um, I'm going to start with BC. So to find BC, I'm going to call the length of BC X. And that goes all the way from here to here. So if I look at this right triangle, it says that this angle is 50. So I will draw that off to the side. So I'm looking for BCX. And I don't know the hypotenuse, right? I don't know AC, but what I do know is AB, so the leg. So this is 28. So I'm going to say, or we know that the tangent of 50 degrees, because we don't have the hypotenuse opposite over adjacent, equals x over 28. So multiply both sides by 28. On the calculator, 28 tan of 50 is 33.36910059. And we're running to the nearest tenth, so BC is approximately 33.4 feet. All right. Now we need to find CD. So I'm going to call CD Y. Well, CD is a side of this triangle. And because there's no right angle, I can't use trig there. But what we can do is utilize this triangle which we know the angle measure is 32, we have this leg of 28, and I'll call this Z. We can find Z, and once we know Z, um, Y would be equal to the whole length X minus the part Z. So to find Z, and that purple triangle, we don't have the hypotenuse, right? So it's going to be opposite over adjacent, which is tangent. So the tangent, um, tangent of 32 degrees equals z over 28. So opposite of dividing is multiplication, and 28 tan of 32 is 17.49634. So 17, whoops, 17 point four nine six three four one eight five. So 
So now to subtract, I need to take the um, x value here and subtract that value. Okay, so if you're going to do that, without uh, scrolling up, I'm just going to do that right here. The x value, if you're going to round ahead of time, at least take it out to the 10,000s like it shows on your trig table. So 33, 1, 2, 3, 4, will be to where the 1 is, point three six nine one minus one two three four seventeen point four nine six three we have C D which was the Y approximately so thirty three point three six nine one minus seventeen point four nine Three. Round to the nearest tenth would be 15.9. Okay, that's it.